Hello guys, welcome back to Doggo Card Reviews. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. So uh, as you can see here, you know, don't, don't be alarmed by the image. It will all make sense when I transition to the next one. But we're going to do something uh, very, very different than our usual card discussions of one sex uh, worth of stuff. And instead it will be a deck discussion and we will be doing it with none other than the Albuquerque series. Uh, labeled by the letters S B Y. Now, of course, I do have a disclaimer. As with all deck profiles and deck texts, the following is ultimately an opinion of those speaking in this video and should therefore not be taken as indisputable fact. This video is meant to open up and facilitate a discussion between the speakers and the viewers, so if this video contains viewpoints you do not quite agree with, feel more than free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Those of us behind Doggo Card Reviews do not deem ourselves perfect players that have solved the game in any meaningful way, so we are definitely more than welcome of your opinions and more than willing to follow up on any comments made to this video. And with that out of the way, we will begin our deck tech with our level 0 lineup, which we have 14 total, and we will start off with none other than my Sakurajima Time and Memory. A level 0, 0 cost, 2000 power with the adolescence and cuisine traits, Auto when she is placed from your hand onto the stage, send the top 2 cards of your deck into the weight room, and she gets X power until the end of the turn where X is the number of level 1 or higher cards sent to the waiting room this way, and climaxes are considered level 0 for this ability, and that should be an auto. Uh, when the battle opponent of this becomes reversed, choose one of your other adolescent characters, rest it, and move it to an empty slot in your back row. And we play 4 copies of this. Oh, in terms of the, um, in terms of the, in terms of the deck itself, holy crap, this card has been very, very useful. Like, it helps promote the tri-field aggression, mm -hmm. and it really helps, and it really helps, like, the scenarios where, ah, oh, crap, okay, so part of my tri-field is swinging with my brainstorm. Well, this helps preserve my brainstorm and gets an extra attack in without without much penalty, I mean, sure, her power is a bit RNG reliant, but at the same time, uh, I do appreciate the extra mill, I do, I do wish this, this district for adolescence instead of level 1 and up, but again, we can't have everything in life. Yeah, they, they have to make sure not to make it too overpowered, like the, you know, because that would be like, wait, this is just a regular 2500 mil 2, plus up to 2k, <laughs> with... 500 less power to just gain clear cut, excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Like, if it, if it, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure if they make a card like that, it's gonna be like, it'll be like 1500 base power. Ooh. 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 At, at the most. I, I don't see him going too far with it. Like, well, you know, B Bushiro math, am I right? But yeah, oh, yeah. um, you anyway, know, we play this because, um, as you'll see later, we do play a yellow card where having the yellow splash does matter. <laughs> All right. And, and the fact is that, well, you know, this is a card that I'm definitely that I'm definitely looking for in my opening hand. Mm -hmm. Of course, not the best card going first, but you know, on subsequent turns, this is amazing. All right, we will move on to the next card. Kaede Asuka with my brother. 0 0 When this is placed in hand to stage, you may pay the cost of one, pitch a climax. If so, choose a climax choose a climax and return it back to your hand. And then she has a startup ability. Tap two. Give one of you guys two thousand for the power. Or two thousand for the turn. Mm -hmm. So climax swap is very, very neat uh, in general just because, you know, especially since we typically uh, will be playing two climax combos in a deck, being able to swap at will, well, you know, because sometimes you just simply draw the wrong climax, but hey, you have Kaige here to fix that coin must to be the other one that you want at the time. So that's very useful. And this, the act ability occasionally it might be useful where you you're just kinda like, you know, I don't need to brainstorm this turn. I'm fine with giving up my back row to really run over something. Now there are times now specifically with this deck, there are times where I'm just like well I, I wish, you know, I kind of wish this was free, but at the same time, I can understand why they had to tack the cost on. 
but at the same time, having this on a level zero is really convenient because, um, th as you'll see later on, this deck is really yellow light, so. You yeah, know, so. It's, it's, really use it's really useful having it. Eh, the, the Gift 2000 is kind of whatever. I've never actually really used it, so. It's there if you need it. The climax swap is really good, really good. Having Kaida as a one of and being able to slam her in on the first turn. Convenient. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Let's move on. Uh, Rio Futaba Telephone Agency. Uh, level 0. Zero costs 2500 power with the Adolescence and Science traits. Also, when she is placed from your hand onto the stage, you may discard a Climax from your hand to the waiting room if you do salvage an Adolescence character from your waiting room. And also, when she becomes reversed in battle, you cannot use Auto Encore for the turn. This includes the Encore 3 stock provided by the rules. And this is also ran at one copy. My god, this is strictly better than the Shoko from set 1. Like, the bottom set. I have actually, in all my experience playing the deck so far, I've actually never once thought about, huh, that pay 3 is, that I really need to pay 3. Nah, you can just have it, bro. Like, Chess and Sargus is probably a character you'll want to ram into something anyway. I mean... <laughs> Open up, like, you're just like, fine, I'll, I'll sacrifice the lane, so... This, this card becomes less of a liability when I actually do need the Encore at any point in the game. Like, level 3. That's true, at a, a 2-5 power, she's... She contests a lot of things, actually. Yeah, uh, you know, being an oversized discard climax to salvage is actually pretty neat and uh you know and the fact is you only need one because if you it's like getting flooded isn't that common of a scenario and if i really need it i'll grab it right all right then shoko maki nohara phantom sister she is she's zero zero two k i want this place from out of stage you you may know the top two cards of your deck. Actually, you must know the top two cards of your deck. There's a climax card among them. Uh, choose one of choose one of your guys and give them fifteen hundred for the turn. And she's also a drop search. So, a drop search with some added benefit of deck fixing, which is very nice. You know, I like the fact that the fifteen hundred is modular. You know, she can give it to anybody, so it's just yeah. Nice. But it's, it's it's to reward like oh, you hit a climax and your top two. Whoop! Better give you something worth it. <laughs> yep, and, it's, they're, and they're honestly not bad. Um, it's honestly not so bad. Like I've used this card to basically you know fetch my brainstorm, you know fetch level one, that part of the level one combo, or even or even a certain level three that uh, that that. That is that certain people don't like seeing, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, at one and you really don't need more than one copy. Like I've seen, you know, some deck play multiple copies of drop searches. Like, eh, drop searches are kind of they're just kind of the most fair cards in any given deck. Right. Albuta is Albuta is definitely setting the trend on that one and not being an example. Mm -hmm. So you go, just a one of just to have that extra little bit of consistency to grab whatever we need at any given time, as Gavin alluded to earlier. Alright All right. then, moving on. Noloka Toyohama, Self-Hatred. She's a level zero, zero cost, 2000 power with the adolescence and fashionable traits. And she has the following ability, Ogo. At the start of your opponent's draw phase, reveal the top card of your deck. If that card is level 1 or higher, you may send this to your hand. Climax cards are considered level 0 for this ability, and you leave the revealed card in its original position. And this is ranked at 4 copies. Am I spoiled by Union? You are spoiled by Union. Damn it! Damn it! You're, 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 you're comparing a double R card with a lot of benefits to an uncommon an uncommon card from an earlier set. This is true. This is true. And, and the fact is that um, if we if we do eventually um, deck tech um, uh, Konosuba, the, I'll definitely make the comparison. But at the same time, <laughs> Nodoka is still a very fine card. Like, yes, I'm spoiled by Yun Yun. She's a she has the potential of being a three five jumper. Like, the jumper Joes are still probably my favorite level zero profile in the entire game because. They help promote the they help promote aggression while while also preserving hand and mm -hmm. that is, 
something that something that I really really value um, over that and pretty much anybody who has faced off against me knows that yeah Jumper Joe is probably going to be part of the aggressive tri field and with the Jumper Joe clean cut and thir third card ideally they have one target they're pushed to level one with one target for the reversal combo if you want and All right. if they're on attack mm -hmm. oh well I pushed you to one first <laughs> right now and if you don't like Jumper Joe's we do have an alternative yep. so I'll let Gavin go over this one Alrighty, Nodoko Toyohama, idol with, the, idol with the Sister Complex 002 King, Adolescence and Fashionable, during your turn. This gains a thousand at the start of your attack step. Uh, you, may mail the top, you may mail the top card of your deck, it's Adolescence, you may run to any slot. So this is very neat in that she is bigger on the offense at a very sizable 3k, which really contests a lot of level zeros out there, period. And she's a mill runner. And I know there are many people out there who still swear by mill runners, so we do have to respect that opinion, and that is why we gave because that's the alternative to playing the red Nogoka jumper. On top of that, she's also yellow, which is important because in this deck, spoiler alert, we don't really play red. Um, and pretty much, um, Pretty much the reason why I included this as an alternative is because of the fact that, well, she is still a runner, and in blind metas, runners are just fine. Like, it's really up to player preference. You know, they're mm -hmm. both they're both meant to preserve card advantage. Mm -hmm. The fact that she's 3k on the offense, she bloody, she bloody contests and kills the majority of utility. Mm -hmm. Hell, she even kills a certain Goblin Slayer and Chaser that is a pain in the ass to kill. That she mm -hmm. can she can easily contest this that card though, unfortunately, uh, she's not big at all times. So mm -hmm. you know you do have to worry about her getting revenge killed if they try field. So right, case, at least she milled your card. In that yeah, case. she milled your card, and you hope it's not a climax. <laughs> right, and for the more budget oriented players, I do apologize. Uh, Nodoka is still kind of expensive. And yeah, the the, problem, the fact that this is a double R of all things. I would suggest you stick with Jumper Joe in that case. Because that's like at least three times as cheap. Actually, that's like 50 cents. This is like eight bucks, dude. Kappa. All right. <laughs> and to conclude our level zeros, we have Shoko Makinohara, Mysterious Girl, ran as a three of. She is a level zero, zero cost, 1500 power with the adolescence and mystery traits. Auto, when a climax is placed on your climax area, choose one of your characters and that character gets 1 level and 500 power until the end of the turn. And act, brainstorm, pay 1, rest this card, flip over the top 4 cards of your deck and send them to your waiting room. For each climax card revealed this way, search your deck for up to 1 adolescence character, reveal it, add it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. You know, thanks, thanks to this set, I am now... I have... I've been like flip flopping my preference towards what kind of brainstorms I prefer, but thanks to this set, it's now solidly. I prefer I prefer tutoring brainstorms over salvage brainstorms. Having that deck knowledge is very nice, and getting out your deck by an additional card on top of the four for each brainstorm you hit is very neat. And and even and even the five hundred and the level can be useful at times, but as you'll see later on in this particular deck, it's not as useful. In fact, uh, there are times where it's actually screwed me, because um, I accidentally assigned 500 at a le that level to the 2-1, and I just go, oh shit, I got anti-changed. Oh, damn it. And my opponent was actually willing to pay the cost. Ugh, that, that got kind of ugly. I should have assigned it to the back row. <laughs> right, yeah, um, you do have to be a little careful, especially, uh, you know, like, I I've seen people be very careless with these types of cards, they'll assign it to a level 3 at level 3, and I'm like, me holding up an anti change. K Kakudori. Really, man? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? I mean, if that was a sack counter in your hand, sure. But a standard, like a, di like a pitch to anti change, come on, man. Really? Hey, oh, man. man. Just, just, it it's basically pay it's basically paying three cards in a stock to anti damage a lane. Oh, that is true. I love money counters. So, 
but but um, <laughs> and of course and of course as we'll I'll be alluding to later, it's also on best girl and this card unfortunately <laughs> SPY players this is twenty dollars each now. And we and unfortunately unlike the no go jumper we really can't think of an alternative to this. There, there's simply nothing better. Unless you like drop rate storms, love now. Yeah, that's kind of a problem. Uh, I'll I'll again and give y'all very good brainstorms outside of Shoko here. And she's blue. Actually, the my variant is like five bucks, so that is a budget alternative. No, we didn't mention it because we just have a preference for search brainstorms. And is is it my red or is it yellow? She she is red and she's also a tutoring brainstorm. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, uh, you, you could choose to play red, and at the same time, we, we don't want to play too many off-color. <sighs> yep, that's the reason why I didn't pick it for the deck. Alrighty, let's All move right. on to level 1, shall yep, we? Yep, level 1. So it will be 9 or 13, so spoiler alert, there will be an or cause again. <laughs> so we will start off with none other than... Alrighty, Shoko Makinohara, Twilight Sky. So, she's a 102k Adolescence and Mystery. She's a 2k counter, boys. So, playing our two copies just because we do have some things we want to protect. If not at level 1, protect at level 2 or 3 just to really keep our damage momentum going and really trying to get as much as we can out of our damage economy without having to spend too many resources to protect certain cards. And as somebody who's actually, as somebody who's played the deck extensively, I just go, yeah, the counters are really useful for protecting certain lanes, um, especially um, our chosen level one combo here. Um, yeah, eight is kind of tiny. You know, you want to be able to protect it. Ten thousand is a lot harder to get get over than eight thousand. Like, you know, there are certain combos in the game where they reach like the nine nine five area, and you're just like, well, and it is worth it to spend the cards since. Um, our level one combo generates so much card advantage that it's re it's often ridiculous, and that gives you that empty lane to swing into. So protecting that damage economy is essential, and the two K counters, in my opinion, are good. Mm -hmm. If now, we of course, could, we would run three, but space is tight. Yeah, I was about to say space is way too tight. I I would not recommend more than two, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, speaking of level one combo. That's what we will show next. Rio Futaba considering injury. She's a 1, 0 cost, 3,000 power with the adolescence and science traits. Auto when she is placed from your hand onto the stage, draw one card and discard one card. And auto when a card named Complex Mind, the book trigger you see on the right of the character, is placed onto your climax area. You may pay the cost of sending this card to your waiting room. If you do, choose up to one card named Rio Futaba Reliable Friend. In your hand, the level 2 that we will allude to later, and place it on your previous slot this card was occupying. And I guess this will be played at 4 copies of the character with 4 copies of the climax. And 4 copies of the 2 one, of course. Which we will, again, we will see later. <laughs> now, of course, now, of course, as we were alluding to in the, as we were alluding to in the review, this is pretty much we've hit the jackpot, boys. Like, this is our quintessential level 1 combo. Yes, it is more high rollish than most uh, most players would prefer, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I feel that um, Albuta in particular does does constitute the um, the high roll style. Like it, it's kind of it sacrifices a little bit of consistency for it, but at the same time, I feel that the high roll you know outvalues consistency. And if you're looking for a more for consistent decks, I think that Albuta is definitely not the set for you anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, Al Buta definitely needs to play needs to be a little dangerous with dice rolling to get the most out of it. I would agree here. Now, ob obviously, it does depend a little. It depends. It's a combination of both skill and you know a bit of luck at the same time. But even still, if your if your luck is decent that day, um, you'll absolutely smash your opponents. Mm-hmm. Now that being said, I know some like as we said earlier, uh, some people don't like these styles of combos because uh, it, the more lanes you need to get off of them, that is two more character cards you need in your hand to prepare them. So we have an alternative for y'all. Alrighty, my Sakurajima respective choice one zero four five adolescence cuisine. 
during your turn, this gains a thousand. Climax combo when this card attacks. If the if those who want happiness, the choice trigger, right next to her, and you have two or more adolescents, two or more other adolescence characters, uh, you may mill the top three. Choose a level X or lower adolescence in your grave and return it to hand. This gains plus one level where X is the number of adolescents milled this way. So I know a lot of people will be like, ew, why do you like playing book triggers? How dare you? Books are so 2009. Um, so, well, you know, so that's why we were saying, like, you know what? We get it. B books are weird. Books are not the best trigger in a game by any means whatsoever. So that's why we're like, you know what? Luckily, they gave y'all choice. Literally. <laughs> and literal and literally so this is the Kirito combo from SAO, for those of you that are familiar with that set, the tenth anniversary specifically. And again, I'm not knocking people that choose to play this particular combo. You know, it's 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 suitable. It gives you it gives you choice, basically. Like and this has more subjectivity <laughs> on top of that. Though, in my opinion, you're playing it too safe with this combo. Like, this is basically like one of the like one of those things. Like, well, it doesn't really spark out to me as the reason to play the set. In my opinion, like this is not the reason to play the set. This combo is just, it's basically just consistency. Like, if you want consistency and you want to play Albuza, I guess you can play this combo. But for it's not my prefer, it's not my preferred combo. Yeah, like and. But you know, um, it is an option if you really prefer playing all Bucha, but in a safe way. Also, it should have been choose up to one level X. I just realized oh. when activating the Japanese there. <laughs> oh, and one and one other thing. Because is, you know, anti salvage is still a thing. <laughs> oh, and one other thing is the reason why we're not playing it in this deck is because this deck has barely any yellow in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, but you know, to be fair, uh. If you were to play this, I would say you would, have, you would be forced to flex out the Nogoka runner, or the Nogoka jumper for the Nogoka runner, to have that extra yellow to facilitate this combo. Right, and in fact, a lot of people actually prefer playing the 8 choice variant, as we'll allude to later on. Right. You know, as an alternative. You know, because just... choice is definitely a trigger that pe I would think more people, like, if you had, if people had to choose which trigger they like, I'm pretty sure like 9 out of 10 points would say they like choice over draw. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, choice gives you that much more flexibility. Yeah, you salvage a character with a soul trigger or you stuck a character with a soul trigger. So it's Pretty either, good. <laughs> it's either 8 or a gold bag. Your choice. Though the gold bag is, you. it's not for the top of your deck, it's you choose. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better than a gold bag. Alrighty, let's move on to the next card, shall sure we? Thing. And to conclude our level ones, if we're talking just a nine count, <laughs> Shoko Makino Hara, homework left behind, ran at three copies. She is a level one, zero cost, four thousand power with the adolescence and mystery traits. Also, when she is placed from your hand onto the stage, you may rest one of your other adolescence characters. If you do, choose a card in your level zone and a card in your waiting room and swap them. And also, when she attacks, if you have another Agulescence character, this card gets 3,000 power until the end of the turn. So... Hello guys, we- Hello guys, we have Deadly Assassin and a very useful ability on top of that, like... This card is basically the perfect level 1 for the Shogo deck because it basically ensures that we meet the condition for her to do her thing. Mm -hmm. As we'll allude to later on. As we will allude to later. And she and she definitely she's definitely pretty powerful too. Like she goes up to bat at seven thousand. Like holy crap! At no like, stock cost. And and with the and with a standard standard climax in the stack. Um, yeah, she goes to bat at eight thousand. Like being able to threaten those one one seven five hand encores. Like forcing the the pilot to either counter over. Or you're forced to hand encore at at end of turn. So basically, I give you that. I basically force you into that scenario, and I basically paid zero for this thing. Like, holy balls! Yeah, I was kind of like this. I was like, this is a. I was like, this is an uncommon. Are are you kidding me? <laughs> like, like. Because it's not even a rare. It's, it's an uncommon. 
like when I first played this card against you, you're just like, yeah, how big is it? I'm like eight thousand. You're like, what the fuck? Eight thousand? Eight thousand? Excuse me. Yeah. So yeah, as you can already tell, uh, Gavin here, Gavin and I here have been testing the build before even coming up with this video. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, wait. And, and I was just like, yeah, she's eight k, dude. Like, you gotta be kidding me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and Shoko is really good at color fixing, too. Huh. I had to level off, um, one of my level 3 Shokos. Oh, excuse me, let me change that to Koga now. Right. Like, this, this is just very, very good utility on a costume level 1. It's almost ridiculous. And, and the funny thing is, is that I'm not even playing this in Konosuba, either. Like, you uh, know, and, and guy, but that deck plays very differently than this. That's, that's true, that's true. That that one has more of a flexible game plan. This one uh, has a very, very... We have a very strict regiment with Albuta. And <laughs> though, I will say this now, say this on video, but pretty much this kind, this deck reminds me of my initial feelings with Triad Primus back in 2016. Like, this deck um, gets me excited. All right. And that concludes our 9 level 1 lineup. So we will move on to level 2s, which there will either be 2 or 6 depending on the route you go. Alrighty, I stuck at Ajima. Understanding feelings. 2 1, 2 5. Adolescent's cuisine, guys. So she's a 2 5 counter, and you may, you may additionally pitch 2 cards, 2 cards from your hand, and she's also an anti change. If you mm -hmm. do. And 2 copies just because, um, uh, Let's, let's be honest here, the game is full of early plays that can generate so much value if left uncontested. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, um, you can't really... You, the game has gotten to the point where if you ignore early plays, you lose. Hard. Like, you either have a plan against them, or you're spamming them. Or preferably both which this deck excels at. Like, honestly, this deck pluses so hard to the point where I'm like, I don't mind pitching almost half my hand just to anti-damage a lane. Right. Like, it's gotten to the point where, like, half the time my hand doesn't even matter. I'm like, okay, I'm at, I'm at seven cards. Okay, sure, I'm gonna... Sure, in response, anti-change that thing. Die. Mm -hmm. Though, at, though with, the, with the current build, I don't necessarily have to play it much, but like this can help um, the level level two Futaba actually contest certain early plays, even with just the just the two five counter by itself. And at ten five, she's not bad in terms of size. So, mm -hmm. in ter especially with the um, especially with the level three support, like yeah, it's she's honestly not bad on defense. So, um, playing playing two copies of this, I think, is per perfectly fine and acceptable. Like. Mm -hmm. I know yeah, some people I, will think that maybe playing only one is necessary, but they're like, I don't need to always have to sing every matchup. Uh, have they played the game recently? <laughs> I, I, I feel some people still think it's the year 2016 or 2017. 2016, 2017 had um, Felt and Rem. Have they not been oppressed by double early plays enough? <laughs> I think at the time, uh, like, remember, uh, Ray Zero wasn't played too much until Sunshine hopped on the scene with their extra booster. Uh, <laughs> because it, because, let's be, because Ray Zero was supposed to be Sunshine's bang. <laughs> Even though, nowadays, um, Sunshine eats Ray Zero for breakfast. I, again, I'm talking a very different time. <laughs> right, but. You, you know, back, back, back when, uh, Chica bomb was our best level one combo. Ew, ew, that's so bad, man. Oh, <laughs> and, and when we and when we were and we were playing empty door. <laughs> no, no, I still have that tech in max rarity. <laughs> anyway, before we get track too far, uh, yes, two copies because early plays have become that proliferate. Yep. All right, moving on. Uh, since we've been talking about the card. Often without even telling you what the card is. <laughs> Here's Rio Futaba, reliable friend. <laughs> Level 2, 1 cost, 7,000 power with the adolescence and science traits. I'll kill when she attacks. She gets 
plus x power and kill the annual return where x is 1000 times the number of your other adolescence characters and auto climax combo. When the battle opponent of this card becomes reversed, if a card named Complex Mind again the door trigger that you see right next to the character there, it's door either trigger. climax me, sir. door trigger book trigger. I'm sorry, Freudian slips are real today. <laughs> If Complex Mind is in your Climax area, uh, and kill the end of your opponent's next turn, this card gets 1000 power and you perform the following action twice. Look at up to the top 4 cards of your deck, choose up to 1 adolescence character among them, reveal it, add it to your hand, and send the remaining cards into your waiting room. And again, character ran at 4 copies, Climax ran at 4 copies in case we need to repeat it. <laughs> hey guys, I'm a dick through time! Yeah, well, when I first, yeah, so anyway, uh, <laughs> when I first saw this card, I was like, wait, this is like Maya from, uh, Bang Train Girls Band Party Volume 2, but better. Uh, excuse me, sir, Maya is, you, she only digs for once, and you pick two cards from one Right, this, that's, that's why I said this is better. <laughs> and this is a partic this is basically a particular event from D.Va on legs, and which is just like, uh, wait, I can do this at level 1? You what? Bushy Road, you what? Mm -hmm. it, like, at first, I was thinking, oh, you played the choice variant, obviously, and you play a certain level 3 that we were alluding to later. But the, as soon as they spoiled this, I was like, no, nah, fuck that. We're, 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 we're high rolling, boys. Yeah. We're high rolling. Boys. And, and on top of that, even, even if, you know, even after we, even when we don't need her combo at a later point in the game, her first ability contests level 3s. I mean, See, full board, you're attacking for 11,000 before any other things take into account. I mean, how many scenarios have you been where you just see Futaba and you just go, well, well buy early play? Yeah, pretty much. Like, she, she's almost, like, this is almost like playing a level 3 killer with a advantage gaining combo. Oh, and the fact that she can come in at bloody 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, so you're like, huh, you're a standby deck that crapped out an 11,000 body on a 2-2? Uh -huh. I, 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 ho I hope you got that counter already. Uh, so, it's like, um, yeah, I'm gonna attempt to destroy that thing. At or, or hell, dude, even target the 7-5. The 1175 with head on cores, it's like, um... Oh yeah, yeah they're, they're definitely done. Because, let's oh. see here, uh, 11,000, 12,000, 13,000 with combo. <laughs> Uh, politely die, please. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll dig through time, and it's just like, like, that's, that's the thing. Like, no, not even conventional 2k counters on a 11,000 body is gonna protect you. Nope. Well, it's a dub. They're, they're it, it'll be a crash, but it's kind of like the combo still goes off. <laughs> and I just plus two back to hand, so you can have fun with that. And you know what? Honestly, in that scenario. I actually might be willing to pay the three and save Futaba in that case because she has been that valuable. Like the choice combo, she gets you one card and she's dead on defense, pretty much guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Like level zeros can borderline destroy her, destroy my Futaba. <laughs> Tech W. Like, like to be fair, if you do encore three, she will lose that one thousand power because that character has forgotten that it happened. <laughs> Yeah, but at the same time, she's still a 217 kitty, which is uh, still somewhat decent. And like we saw, and like we said earlier, we are playing 2,000 cost switch backups, so s serviceable 9,000 counter range in, in worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, man, 9k is now, pretty hard to get over. Now, of course, if you really dislike these three piece combos, that become five pieces when you're trying to get two of these off. We do have an alternative. Rio Futaba, Twilight Sky, one zero four five. Uh, when she's placed from hand to stage for the turn, she gets a level and one thousand, so she's effectively a two zero vanilla. And when this card attacks, choose one of your other adolescent characters, and they gain five hundred. They gain five hundred five hundred times X, where X is the number of your other adolescents. I play at four copies to replace the four copies of uh, level two real you will not be running because you do not want to attempt to high roll with 
this kind of combo and you want to play choice instead. So, you know, this will help get, this will help so that Mai can get big enough to contest certain big things, which is nice. Yeah, by it's cough cough. Yeah, and you know, uh, if you still run into them, this takes care of those pesky level 1 bombs. Really? Level 1 bombs, man? Come on, man. Level 1 bombs are so rare now. <laughs> hey, man, I'm, I'm just saying, you, you don't know what you're playing in another state sometimes, or another part of the world. <laughs> this, is, this is true. Going into the blind meta, having that 2-0 is better than not having it, but at the same time, you just go bonking sometimes. Right. It, 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 again, it's really like, you know, at the end of the day, play to your mega, and we decide that our mega, we want to play a different kind of build in the All Butcher series. Yeah, I was about to say. We're but you know, again, we, we do offer these alternatives because, again, we, we, we know there are people who really just like these very high, higher, higher number of piece reliant combos. <laughs> I guess they don't like, I guess they don't really like dice rolling. Which I don't blame them for because, you know, I, I will be honest here and say that yes, White Scores is very much a high variance game. So, you know, if you want to play safe, you know, White Scores do, does offer those options as we have alluded to already. And honestly, like I said earlier, I can't blame people for playing choice combo, but at the same time, uh, I'm sorry, I, pre I prefer playing a very different game. Mm-hmm. Alright, let's move on to those level 3s, the juicy part. The juicy part. So, we'll be playing 13. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. So, searching for help. A level 3 1 cost event that will do the following. Search your deck for up to 1 adolescence character. Reveal it, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck, choose one of your opponent's characters, and send it to their hand. Play it as a single copy. So, as soon as I, I, read, I read this card, I was like, you what, Might? Mm-hmm. That, that's insane. <laughs> mm hmm I'm like, okay, guys, so I get a tutor, and I get to bounce something that's extremely annoying? For one stock? Fuck yeah! And... Why un not? Uncommon, so very affordable. Oh, and, of course, this acts as an additional copy of any card in your deck, specific... But most of the time, you want to be tutoring for level threes, and we play just enough yellow, just enough yellow to, to make this card worth it. And, right. So this is like the one yellow card we're actually playing. <laughs> and the one and the time that the times I have played it, holy balls, Batman! <laughs> You've hated seeing this card. Mm-hmm. All right. Moving on. Shoko Makina Hada, time and memory. Three, two, six, five. If you have four more other other adolescence characters on board, she gains minus one level in hand, so that means she's an early play. She is a global fifteen hundred, and when she's placed from hand to stage, you look at the top X cards of your of your deck, choose up to one of them, and then bid the rest. Mm hmm And got two copies. So very easy to meet level early play condition. Very good global stack increase. And she's a can trip. Sign me up. Hell yeah, hell yeah, boys. The, like, the only problem with this card is the fact that she's a background character, but at the same time, just like, man, there's not much else to complain about. She good. She good. <laughs> she, and she makes our the rest of our deck, like, Futaba, she makes Futaba a 9-5 after combo. Like, oh my god, that, she's the same toughness as, as other, as other early plays, like, she, and she's a fucking 2-1 that can't be anti-changed at that point. That's just absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Now, of course, you might be thinking, like, when you're watching this video, like, man, y'all are high-rolling too much, or y'all are thinking, like, too ideally. And I'm like, as we were saying, in this kind of deck, you just have to gamble and pray you get the right conditions all set up. <laughs> I mean, and the fact is that, yes, we are high-rolling. And you know what? I'm more than willing to admit it but at the same time uh you know build this deck and try it out for yourselves like if you can if, if, if you can high roll to any degree um you will absolutely curb stomp your locals you will absolutely curb stomp because majority of people probably are not ready for this deck 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, this 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 deck's a whole different beast. It's it's kind of it's kind of hard. Like, it's kind of hard to contain my excitement for it. Mm-hmm. All right, I will. Let's move on then. Yep. Shoko Makino Hara, Dream Girl, ran at 3 copies, a level 3, 2 cost, 9500 power with the Adolescence and Mystery traits. Continuous, if there are 2 or fewer coin max cards in your waiting room, she gets level minus 1 in your hand. Continuous, during your turn if all of your characters are Adolescents, she gets 2000 power. And also, when she is placed from your hand onto the stage, you may send the top card of your clock to your waiting room. Bruh. 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 This card is, like, the only thing wrong with this card is the two or less condition in a lot of people's eyes. But, you know, even still, the two or less condition with Futaba goes, that's easy. Yeah, but, you're digging your deck pretty fast. And the fact is that she's 11-5 on offense. Mm -hmm. 13,000 with the, with the bloody support, like, holy balls, man, man. There's not much that can contest her. And she even healed you on top of that, like... There is definitely not much wrong with this card, and, like, Japan agrees with me, and this card has shot up from, like, a couple dollars to, like, almost ten. Mm-hmm. People so, have been- people have swept on this card. <laughs> I mean, people are still- people are still playing Kaede for whatever reason, I'm just like, as we've alluded to throughout the entire- uh, throughout the entire deck tech and back in the review, how the mighty have fallen like red has just become the best color to easily the worst color and you can easily ignore red with with um, albu to set two and definitely go ahead and play the green early play instead sure she has a worse condition but i don't think you'll be missing it too much especially in this deck right like there's a reason why the only red card we've shown you so far and spoiler alert that is the only red card we will show you is the jumper <laughs> yeah, yep all right moving on Ryo Futaba, Usual Exchange, 3-2, 9k, Adolescence and Science Trade. When she is placed from hand to stage, you look at the top three cards, you choose up to one of them, and bin the rest. When this card attacks, choose one of your Adolescents, they gain X power, where X is 500 times your guys, and she is pitched to character cards. And when the battle opponent of this becomes the first, you may pay the cost, if you do, send them to clock. Alright, so... On play can trip, pretty good. Uh, gives power to anybody you want, and uh, cross turn clock kick opportunity. Wow. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that this is only our rarity too, because a similar card, uh, Lethal from Sao, uh, re edit I believe. Yeah, re edit. Um, that was a double R. No. To Bushy Road's credit, Leafa is always big. Futaba, unfortunately, is 9k on defense. True. Leafa is always like 11k or some shit. <laughs> now, of course, your hopefully your opponent is not dumb enough to ram weenies into Futaba. Unless you're that confident that it gets them game. But at the same time, if it doesn't, you just go pitch two cards, kick that thing. Right. And I believe, unlike Leafa, this one you have to discard characters. Because Leafa can not discard anything. Yep, discard two cards. Why can't you give us that condition back, <laughs> Oh well. Uh, lo though, lo 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 luckily, most of our cards are characters, forehead. <laughs> though, in Leafa's case, she also digs more, too. So, yeah, she can dig up to five. <laughs> so, uh, while well, this might be a worse Leafa, this is still a good card. Yeah, but you know, as a single ten because we're not relying on it to be a main win condition by any means. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely not, dude. Remember when? Remember when? Um, decks like, you know, put four clock kicks in their deck as their main win condition. I do remember that. Uh, back in the Stone Age. Back in the Stone Age, cry, cry, cry same project Eva still. <laughs> oh, oh right, I forgot you're still running Factory Tyrant some ungodly reason. Come because on. it's a gold bar. And what other good gold bar combos are there? This is true. I don't know. <laughs> you could be running Pants Trigger instead. Grosu. Pants Triggers. I'm not playing. I, I used to play Cantarella. It was okay. I don't get one playing again. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> anyway, before we, before we go off on a tangent, let's go on to another tech. <laughs> Ryo Futaba going get position as a one off. Level 3 2 costs 8500 power with the adolescence and science traits. Continuous, if she is on your front row center slot, she gets 4000 power. Uh, continuous, if you are level 3 or higher, this gets bodyguard, so if you are playing standby, be aware. <laughs> And also, when the battle opponent of this card becomes reversed, you may pay the cost of one stock and discard a card from your hand to the waiting room. If you do, burn one, damage cancel can occur. Hey look, it's a remnant from the standby deck. And actually one of the best pieces of the standby deck because, look, she's a 12-5, she is still extra thick, 14,000 with the bloody support, and she has bodyguard like, bruh. Bruh, bruh. The majority of people, their response to her is bloody bounce the thing. Mm hmm. Because they don't want to deal with auto reverse burn one. And that burn mm -hmm. one is super cheap. Like, mm -hmm. holy balls, Batman. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh. I definitely don't mind hard casting her at this point. Right, like you're like cool. Let me let me let me grab King and hey, let me grab King another way to finish you if uh, my actual level three. If my actual main game doesn't finish you somehow. <laughs> uh, which, which, if you don't play three of her, I can see it. But at the same time, two of her plus this thing. <laughs> your your opponent is in a very tricky position. I hope I hope you have I hope you have a burn heal ready. Or you have on play bounce. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> All right, and you get to read this. Oh my god, yes. Check up. I know how to irreplaceable existence. 3 2 10 kip. Adolescence mystery. When she is placed from hand to stage, you may heal. Climax combo experience. Uh, when this card attacks, if you have the future has arrived, the pants trigger you see to your right. As in the climax zone, and you have uh, the sum of your levels in your level zone is 6 or higher, aka experience 6. Look at the top 3 cards of your opponent's deck. Choose up to 3 of them, put them back in any order. Bin been any of you may bin any of them and look it up to the top card of your deck choose whether or not you want to keep it on top or put it in the bin and get this card gains two five for the turn fake seal you, anyone <laughs> i will let you go ahead and explain your war stories <laughs> this card first. right so this kind of card like you, you know how we will, everyone agrees, White Switch is very much a high variance game. And at level 3, chances are if you are playing a game very well, you have this, you have a very good level of this thing called compression. This card will say, high compression, buy compression. <laughs> All that hard work you put into manipulating your deck to give you the best chances of surviving an onslaught have gone out the window once this card is, is comes onto the board. <laughs> like he just said, holy shit. Like, this is the reason to play Albuta, like, this card is so bonkers, like, holy crap, I don't even need to pitch cards from hand for this ability, like, look at, at the top three, I mean, there's a reason why I call I've nicknamed this card Shoko the Mind Sculptor, because <laughs> uh, I think my co-host can attest to this. Um, it's it's like it's like your opponent has played Jace the Mind Sculptor. Right, and where they where they like you know instead of sealing what you draw, they seal the damage you're gonna take. Yep. <laughs> Which is bye bye you lose. <laughs> I mean, in in their respective games. It might as well say bye bye you lose because in magic, feet sealing your opponent's draw every single turn, you pretty much can have them draw land for the rest of the game while you do whatever whatever you want. In this game, you you can be like, Oh look, you're about to take three damage. Yeah, take three damage. Love because <laughs> the fact that this also can confirm your trigger or give you an extra chance at a at a non-trigger because you do want to swing for as exact as possible after fake stealing your opponent. <laughs> that's it, it, pretty good. That's, 
that's just insane. And the fact that like this this is basically fixed Mocha, <laughs> and Mocha's already powerful. Well, Mocha's also free. This costs you two. Right, like that's how we have a quote unquote balancing out. Oh, and experience six. Oh no, <laughs> that's not particularly difficult. Not with this deck. Like this. Like the experience six, as soon as I saw this card, I was like, yeah, this is a build around. And this definitely. And that guy's why we are playing 13 level, 13 level threes, no matter what we're doing. This is this is definitely my preferred end game. Like, this. A lot of people don't believe in this card. I'm just like, you're sleeping on this? Really? Really? Like, huh, like, y'all got my face ceiling? I, oh, interesting. And the fact that she heals you on top of that. Mm hmm. Like, healing finishers, I've grown to like. Mm -hmm. Like, in fact, I believe, yeah, all of my S tier decks have healing finishers rather than rather than cantrip finishers, which I've actually grown accustomed to having other cards cantrip and my like early place. <laughs> I've played this against um, a few members of my local group, and they're like, "Yeah, that that card's pretty fucking scary." Oh god, right. really? I thought you would be on the Musashi combo. <laughs> Musashi combo. Mm -hmm. And oh. uh, sp speaking of, so alternative, because I know some people are going to be like, man, I want to play Shoko, that shit expensive, I don't want to have to work for that. And that's fine, because we have this for y'all. Nogoku Toyohama Christmas present. Level 3, 2 cost, 10,000 power with the adolescence and fashionable traits. When she is placed from your hand onto the stage, look at up to the top three cards of your deck, choose up to one of them, and add it to your hand, and send the rest to your waiting room. An auto climax combo. When a card named Mingy Live, the choice trigger you see right next to her, is placed onto your climax area, and if she is in the front row, you may pay the cost of one stock and discard one card from your hand. If you do, choose one of your other characters and discard, and those characters get the following ability until the end of the turn. All kill this ability activates up to once per turn. When this card's damage is cancelled, send the top card of your deck to the waiting room and deal X damage to your opponent, where X is the level of the card sent to the waiting room this way, plus one. Damage cancel may occur, card masses are level zero. So, this is the alternative choice. Like, okay, for those of you saying that Shoko is too expensive, now let's do a little bit of math here. Nodoka, in order to play her, costs three six stock for the three Nodokas, and she requires one stock and a card each for for the combo. So thus giving us a total of nine stock. Remember, you don't have attacks to help pay the cost. With Shoko, you do have attacks to help pay the cost, so Shoko only costs ten stock. To trigger three of them. Nodoka costs nine and three card. Now a lot of people will be like, well that's the cantrips for. It. The cantrip can help, but is not necessarily not necessarily the best best thing to best um, best way to help about it because you might be needing to find the climax or you might need to be fi finding additional copies of Nonoka, which can be a problem. I have played this combo, I have experimented a little bit with it. And six Musashis, while sounding great on paper, isn't nearly as good as Fate Seal 3. Right. Um, on top of, you know, the way to argue it would be, you know, okay, you play choice. Choice means you do have an opportunity at, at extra stock when your hand's already too big. <laughs> and, you know, that, that, that got cool and all. I get it. You know what? I get it. I get it. But at the same time, for those of you that are arguing that Shoko is too expensive, when you actually do the math, nine versus nine stock versus ten stock isn't that isn't that much. Like isn't that much more. Like I've um, I've played the game with both you know with both versions of the deck in mind, and I go ten stock isn't that hard to achieve. In fact, I find more finding Shoko the harder part than actually get it, than getting the ten stock itself. Mm hmm. Of course, I wish I had more cantrips and tutors, but unfortunately, uh... You have to a play high roll. <laughs> space is space is limited too. Right, and uh, we are choosing to play high roll, lo narrower selection choice cards. <laughs> but still, Sh 
Shoko definitely puts up a fight as you as you have definitely have been right. subject to. But you know, that, that being said, um while we will say that Shoko is better, you know, if you think like Shoko is too expensive monetarily, Noriko should actually be quite affordable in comparison if I remember correctly. She's eight dollars compared to Shoko's twenty. Right, so you know, I know if you, you know, I'm pretty sure there are people who like Noriko as a character more than Shoko for reasons. <laughs> On top of that. Uh, if you watch the movie, basically, Noriko is basically... Well, Maya definitely uses the Nika voice. And if you like the Nika voice, Noriko might be more appealing. <laughs> and she's saying Igo, so... If you like Igo's... She's basically a more... A, she basically, she's basically a donko, except she complains a lot more. Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, those are two choices. Fake Seal or Musashi times X. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to the final card. Mm -hmm. Tomoe Koga, The Dating Plan. 3-2-10k, Adolescent Smartphone. So by the way, this is the only Koga card in the entire deck. So sorry, Koga fanboys. When this place from hand to stage, this card gains X ball, where X is the number of fun. Where X is 500 times your guys, and this ability activates up to once per turn. During the, during the turn, this is placed from hand to stage. When the battle opponent of this becomes the first, you may pay the cost of one and two and two adolescence characters from your hand. If you do, stand this. Alternate okay, finger sure got Kasugi a climax combo. Cool. So, cheap restands, boys. Yep. And she, she's not too small. Well, five. I mean, Jesus, that's yeah. pretty big. That's pretty big for a comboless restand, especially since I don't have to pay three stock at a card anymore. Like, wow. Yeah, it's actually quite sad when I look back at some restand climax combos, and I'm like, why do you cost three stock and two cards? When, hey man, that power creep. And <laughs> do they get bigger? Do they get bigger than Koga, or are they smaller than Koga? I think with combo, they become something like fourteen thousand. So. I oh, guess bigger. <laughs> but at the same time, your opponent can just be like, sack counter. Oh, yeah. Kidding me. But you know, you can sack counter against you, right? <laughs> this, this is not as nearly as feels bad, though. Right. Because, yeah, because some of those restand combos were on attack. You pay the cost. <laughs> no. Pulse no. Pulse no. <laughs> yeah. Pulse no. I, I'm not even going to tell you which side this guy I'm referring to either. I mean, if this gets money countered, like, if, if they get money countered, you really, you Omega feels bad. But you know, guys, that's kind of the thing you deal with when playing against cards like this and, um, Shoko. Because you probably are from attacking with these. You are, like, I, I guess, like, one of the weaknesses of this deck. Things like money counters do f you a bit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, again, that's part of the risk you have to take. Like, mm -hmm. like that's the thing. Um, if if this what like, if this if this could avoid money counters, this probably would have gotten restricted by now. <laughs> hey, that's why we that's why we have demonic tutor for assistance. It bounces <laughs> that lane. Oh, what the? It's like money counter. <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm not- I don't have to worry about money counters. I don't even worry about counters if there's no character. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alright, so with that, that ends our first ever deck tech. Uh, if you like the video, you know, give the video a like, uh, drop a comment, subscribe, and... I was with the YouTube algorithm. And with that, we will big y'all farewell. Bye-bye.